morning we are going to focus on what is the baptism in the Holy Spirit? What is the baptism in the Holy Spirit? You see, the first thing, it is a biblical experience. It has its origin in the Bible. It is what the Bible teaches us. And both John the Baptist and Jesus himself spoke of this experience. We read in Matthew chapter 3 verse 11 what John the Baptist has to say about being baptized in the Holy Spirit. And we read in Matthew chapter 3 11 you know John the Baptist was the one who was baptizing people as they believed in Jesus and repented of their sins he used to baptize them in water. And this is what he said I baptize you with water of repentance. See the baptism of water is a baptism of repentance. But after me will come one who is more powerful than I. He is talking about Jesus. Yes, he is talking about Jesus. Whose sandals I am not fit to carry. He will baptize you with the Holy Spirit and with fire. He declared that Jesus will come. And he will baptize you with Holy Spirit and fire. I am baptizing you with the water baptism. But Jesus will come and he will baptize you with the Holy Spirit baptism. And then in our today's passage, Jesus said in Acts chapter 1 verse 4. The resurrected Lord Jesus, as he was fellowshipping with the disciples, in the upper room, he said to them, Do not leave Jerusalem, but wait for the gift. My father promised, which you have heard me speak about. Jesus taught them about the Holy Spirit in John chapter 14, 15 and 16. And he said, You have heard about me teaching you on the Holy Spirit. For John baptized with water, but in a few days, you will be baptized with the Holy Spirit. You should get the baptism of the Holy Spirit. Do not leave Jerusalem. That was the command. Without getting it, you need to have it. That is what Jesus emphasized in these words. And the disciples continued praising and praying and worshipping the Lord in the upper room. And we read in Acts chapter 2 verses 1 to 4 that on the day of the Pentecost, you see, they were all filled with the Holy Spirit and they were baptized of the Holy Spirit. And on that very same day, in Acts chapter 2 verse 39, Acts 2 39, see what the Holy Spirit baptized Peter, filled with the Holy Spirit declared that this experience is for all God's people throughout the entire church age. We read in Acts 2.39. The promise is for you and your children. The promise about the Spirit of God, the Holy Spirit that Jesus promised to the disciples and taught about them. Now Peter declares that is to the whole crowd and all the people. It is for you and your children and for all who are far off. And then he defines what is he talking about. For all whom the Lord our God will call. Means every person who will be born again by believing in Jesus as their Savior will also get this baptism of the Holy Spirit. That is what Peter declared. And Jesus commanded this, you see in Luke chapter 24 verse 49. You see as he was resurrected from the grave and he begins it with a promise in Luke 24 49 I am going to send you what my father promised I'm going to send him to you what my father has promised and then he commanded stay in the city until you have been clothed with power from on high 
Stay in the city till you be clothed with power from on high, from God himself. And so the baptism of the Holy Spirit brings you the spiritual power, you see. Brings the power of the Spirit of God that you can live your spiritual lives well and you can live your life for Jesus and you can live your life for God and the kingdom of God. And you see Jesus already said that in Luke 24, 49 and then again he repeated it in Acts chapter 1 verse 4 that do not leave Jerusalem but wait for the gift my father promised. And again in Ephesians 5, 18 Ephesians chapter 5 verse 18 you know Paul is writing to the Ephesian church he compares it with the being getting drunk with wine but then he says be filled with the spirit instead of coming under the influence of alcohol he says you do not have to do that you should always be under the influence and control of the Holy Spirit not that other thing. That is what Paul is trying to teach them. Be filled with the Holy Spirit. And so every believer is under a divine commandment. To be filled with the Holy Spirit. The filling of the Holy Spirit begins only from the day when you make a full surrender of your life. Once you make a full surrender of your life to the Lord. Then the Holy Spirit comes upon you. And so it is a subsequent experience, you see. The disciples were all born again, you see. When they believed in Jesus as their Messiah. And they had left everything and followed after Jesus. They were all born again as they believed in Jesus. What is to be born again? It is to believe in Jesus, you see. And so the new birth is just a starting event. Or being born again is just a beginning event that begins as you begin to believe in Lord Jesus as your Savior. But then that experience has to keep on going till it climaxes or culminates in your full surrender to God, you see. You have just begun to believe in Lord Jesus as your Savior. You were born again. You made a beginning of your walk with Jesus but it should climax. It should culminate to the point that you fully now surrender your life to Jesus. And when you make a full surrender, then the Holy Spirit comes upon you. See? You get immersed in God so much that you get surrounded by the Spirit of God and you have the baptism of the Holy Spirit. And so when the disciples, you see they believed in Jesus, they were born again, they were following after Jesus, their Messiah, but one day they saw that Jesus fully laid down his life for their salvation on the cross. On the cross for their salvation, Jesus fully laid down his life. And so now it was their turn. It was now their turn to lay down their lives in full surrender to the Lord. You see, they had not made a full surrender to the Lord. You know, when, they, when the Roman soldiers came to arrest Jesus in the garden of Gethsemane, you know, Bible says each of the disciples ran away, you see. They ran away. Because they had not made a full surrender yet. When Jesus asked them to wait and pray, what they were doing? They were sleeping, you know. How many times Jesus had to come and, come and wake them up? And even Peter, John and James, which were his very close disciples, they were also falling to sleep. And when the Roman soldiers came, you see, they ran away because there was no full surrender. But when they saw Jesus hanging on the cross, he had the power to come down. You see, he was a very powerful man. He was, in fact, God himself. He could have. He said to them, see, if I can order, 
if i order angels from heaven my father will send a legion of angels these roman soldiers have no power over me they cannot arrest me i freely allow myself for them to arrest me and to put me on the cross even when they came asking jesus uh, i mean searching for jesus in the garden of gethsemane and the soldiers were asking who is jesus who is the jesus of nazareth because with all the disciples and jesus among them they could not make out who is jesus you see and so jesus stood in front of them and said i am you see he said i am the i am you see and bible declares all the whole army of the roman soldiers fell flat to the ground you see they all fell flat to the ground as he said i am you see and so such was his power they could not they would not have been able to arrest him but jesus allowed he himself jesus fully laid down his life for our salvation on the cross when disciples saw that then after his resurrection they realized now they have to lay down their lives in full service to the lord and they, when they did that as soon as they had done that they kept on waiting on the lord for 10 days and continue in his praising and worshiping and surrendering their lives to him and emptying themselves from all the selfish things and that moment came when they reached that full surrender the holy spirit fell upon them and they were baptized in the holy spirit and filled with the holy spirit and peter declared that this is a promise for each each person everyone who believes in jesus even in the coming future and that's why this is is experience that has to climax and culminate into be into the full surrender and being baptized of the holy spirit let's turn to acts chapter 8 4, 4 to 17 acts chapter 8 let us look at the revival in samaria looking to the revival in samaria see what happened as we read from chapter acts 8 reading from verse 5 to 8 You see Philip Philip went down to the city in Samaria to a city in Samaria and proclaimed the Messiah there verse 6 When the crowds heard Philip and saw the signs he performed they all paid close attention to what he said for with strikes impure spirits came out that is demons left came out of many and many who were paralyzed or lame were healed so there was a great joy in that city you see the samaritans believed in jesus as their savior as philip was preaching to them here bible declares they paid a very close attention they paid a close attention to the gospel the good news being preached by philip unto them and the result was there was a great joy in the city the real joy comes when the person gets saved and as the people were being saved you see they found the true joy there was so much joy even if you read john chapter 4 verse 39 in john chapter 4 jesus himself had gone down to samaria preaching and first he had preached to that samaritan woman and she got saved and through her witness we read in verse 39 many of the samaritans believed in him you see so many people were born again with the preaching of jesus you see many samaritans believed in him let's read verse 42 now we believe see what they testified now we believe not because of your speaking they are telling to the samaritan woman 
It's not because you witnessed to us and because you told us that we were born again or we believed. For we have heard for ourselves and know we have heard Jesus himself now. And know that this is indeed the savior of the world. And so the work of revival as Philip was preaching, you see those people were being saved and born again, you see, many of them. And so there was a great joy in the city. And so then uh, we read uh, in verse 12, in Acts chapter 8, verse 12, Acts 8, 12. But when they believed Philip, they believed what Philip said, the good news. As he preached the good news of the kingdom of God and the name of Jesus Christ, they were baptized, both men and women. They were given the water baptism. Water baptism was given only after they were born again, after they believed in Jesus as their savior. But then later on we read, they made a full surrender and were baptized of the Holy Spirit. We read in verses 14 to 17 now. Acts 8, 14 to 17, we see, read about the baptism of the Holy Spirit. When the apostles in Jerusalem heard that Samaria had accepted the word of God, they sent Peter and John to Samaria. When they arrived, they prayed for the new believers that they might receive the Holy Spirit because the Holy Spirit had not yet come upon, you see, come on them, you see. When we baptize a person in the water here in this tank and we dip the person, immerse the person under the water, the water level comes above the person that is being baptized. The water has to come above the head, you see, as the person is being baptized in the water, you see. And that is how the water baptism takes place. As the person surrenders into the hands of the pastor, allowing him to dip them or immerse them into the water. And so also as we surrender our lives fully to Jesus, John the Baptist declared, I baptize you with water, but the one who is coming after me, Jesus, he will baptize you with Holy Spirit and fire. The full surrender of our lives when we make to Jesus. Then Jesus then immerses you into the experience of the Holy Spirit so much that when you get immersed into the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit comes above you, upon you. And you are baptized with the Holy Spirit. And as you are baptized with the Holy Spirit, you see, as Jesus said in Luke 24, 49, I am going to send you what my father has promised. Stay in the city. That is, till you make your full surrender. This is the instructions. Until you have been clothed with power from on high. You see, you will be clothed with the power from on high. And so when you get baptized with the Holy Spirit, you receive power, you see. Receive the power of the Holy Spirit to live spiritual life in the power of God, you see. You do not have to live your spiritual life in your human strength. You will fail every day. And you will fall into sin every day, even if you are born again. But if you begin to receive the power from the Holy Spirit after being baptized in the Holy Spirit, you will be filled with the Holy Spirit, you see. Because now you have fully surrendered your life to Jesus. You have fully emptied yourself of everything and filled of the Holy Spirit. And when you get filled with the Holy Spirit, you get clothed with power, you see. And so, we read here, that verse 18, Acts chapter 8 verse 18, because the Holy Spirit had not yet come on them, on any of them, they had been simply been baptized, they had simply been baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus, that was the water baptism. Then Peter and John placed their hands on them, and they received the Holy Spirit, meaning they were filled with the Holy Spirit. They were filled and were baptized with the Holy Spirit. And so this is how 
the Samaritans got baptized with the Holy Spirit. We read in Acts chapter 9 regarding the Saul of Tarsus. Acts chapter 9, the Saul of Tar Tarsus who was converted on the road to Damascus as he was breathing threats to persecute the Christians in the city of Damascus. You see what happened in Acts chapter 9 as Saul was traveling on the road to Damascus. Suddenly a bright light shone around him and he heard the voice of the resurrected Lord Jesus. Saul, Saul, why are you persecuting me? And verse 5, see he said, who are you Lord? In that very instant he was transformed, you see. In that very instant he was saved, you see. He realized that the voice speaking to him is no other than the Lord himself. And so he says, who are you Lord? He called Jesus as the Lord. And 1 Corinthians chapter 12 verse 3. 1 Corinthians chapter 12 verse 3. The B part. I'll read the B part. No one can say Jesus is the Lord. Except by the Holy Spirit. See in that very instant. He was born again. Yet he called Jesus as Lord and believed in Jesus as the Lord and verse 6 now Jesus is giving him instructions that this is not enough that he has believed in him as the Lord something else has to happen verse 6 X 9 6 now get up and go into the city you will be told what you must do you will be told what you must do and he obeyed Jesus had submitted to his will he went there as Jesus had commanded Jesus had commanded him to wait for the further instructions how he can make a full surrender and be baptized of the Holy Spirit and so Saul went to that home where he is supposed to wait and then the Lord on the other side spoke to a disciple called Ananias who can help him to make a full surrender of his life and be baptized and filled with the Holy Spirit we read in now Acts 9 17 Acts 9 17 then Ananias went to the house and entered it entered the house where Saul was placing his hands on Saul he said, Brother Saul, the Lord Jesus who appeared to you on the road as you were coming here has sent me so that you may be, you may see again and be filled with the Holy Spirit. See that? Say that you may be filled with the Holy Spirit. You may be baptized and filled with the Holy Spirit. That is the very reason the Lord has sent me. And so the, so Saint Paul, I mean who was then Saul at that time, he was filled with the Holy Spirit. And see the result of his baptism of the Holy Spirit. See what was the result. We read in verse 20 to 22. Acts 9, 20 to 22. At once he began to preach in the synagogues. See that? He was not afraid, you see. He began to preach and witness. At once Paul or the Saul began to preach in the synagogues that Jesus is the Son of God. All of those who heard him were astonished and asked, Isn't he the man who raised in havoc in Jerusalem among those who call on his name? And hasn't he come here to take them as prisoners to the chief priest? Verse 22, yet Saul grew more and more powerful and baffled the Jews living in Damascus by proving that Jesus is the Messiah. He became more and more powerful. Why? Because now he was baptized of the Holy Spirit and he was clothed with the power from on high. He was walking in the power of the Spirit of God. And he was becoming more and more powerful 
as more and more he was being filled of the Holy Spirit. See, baptism is a again of the Holy Spirit is a beginning point. As soon as you make a full surrender of the Lord and immerse yourself in the presence of God, the Holy Spirit comes upon you. And that is the beginning point of your being filled with the Holy Spirit. But the more and more as days go by, you continue in the presence of God and continue for making more and more full surrender and more and more more and more yielding to the Lord you get more and more filled with the Holy Spirit and the more and more you get clothed with power from on high and you continue as a man of God a woman of God in great power and anointing of the Holy Spirit and so this is the baptism of the Holy Spirit that it brings you the power of God. Shall we pray? Pray in your heart right now. Lord make me more hungry and more thirsty to make a full surrender of my life to Jesus. Jesus said in John chapter 7 verse 37 If anyone is thirsty let him come to me and drink and from within him will flow the streams of living water Jesus had spoken about the Holy Spirit that those who believe in him were going to receive. Ask the Lord to make you more and more hungry and thirsty for Jesus that you may be able to make a full surrender of your life unto Jesus. Remove every selfishness from your heart, from your life, from your mind. When the disciples saw that Jesus fully laid down his life for their salvation on the cross, now it was their turn to fully surrender their lives to Jesus. And today it is my turn and your turn to fully surrender your life to Jesus. Let your born again experience climax and culminate into the full surrender to the Lord with the Holy Spirit coming upon you and being baptized and filled with the Holy Spirit and clothed with the power from on high. Ask the Lord to give you more understanding about what you have heard today. We'll continue learning more and more on this in coming Sundays. Thank you Holy Spirit for speaking to us this morning. Thank you for the presence of God is with us right now. Thank you, Lord. We need to fully yield and surrender our lives unto you. Without any reservations, but full submission and full commitment of our lives unto you. Of all our desires, our ambitions, our will, and everything lay down at the feet of our Lord Jesus. And when we give our life in full surrender, into the hands of Jesus. He can multiply our life with great power. Just as he multiplied those five loaves and two fishes to reach out to the thousands. He can multiply our life with great power to reach out to the thousands. As Paul, after he got baptized with the Holy Spirit, 
He kept on growing in power and power and being used mightily of God. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Help us to grow in this experience. Bless your people now, Lord, right now. Bless them, Lord. We ask in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen.